Today we're talking about DC versus Maryland with a focus in Montgomery County. We're going to cover different areas of why you might choose to live in one versus the other. Location, taxes, real estate, retirement, parks and recs, and everything in between. So let's get started. Okay, getting into location. You're probably aware that DC is the capital of the United States, but it is solely on the Maryland side of the Potomac River. Originally it was on both sides, the Virginia side as well, but that was seated back many years ago. If you're curious, you can look up the boundary stones and you can go to the very first one, which is at Jones Point Park in Alexandria. But that being said, DC is a quadrant based system. So Northeast, Northwest, Southeast, Southwest, and it has a population of right around 700,000 people. Maryland is a larger state than obviously DC is. Uh, Maryland comes in at just over 6 million people. It's 23 counties and one city of Baltimore. But in this comparison, we're gonna focus mostly on Montgomery County because that's the area in which we serve. If you're looking for other areas like Baltimore City, Annapolis, Howard County, PG County, feel free to reach out. I do have partners in those areas as well, which can help serve you. But I focus most of my time on Montgomery County, DC, and Northern Virginia. Okay, getting into housing, big key differences between DC and Maryland, with the folks in Montgomery County. If you look at single family home pricing for the last year in DC, you come in right at $1.1 million. And in Montgomery County, you're looking right at just under $800,000 with a wide um, range of properties in there as well. So if you're looking in say, uh, a Edgemore and Bethesda, which we've covered, you're gonna be significantly above a million dollars for a single family home there. Uh, even if it is a million there, it's more than likely gonna be a teardown. Other areas like Rockville, Gaithersburg, Silver Spring, you can certainly get a great single family home property uh, in great condition. You can get a yard, a garage, all the things for under a million dollars. Where in Northwest DC, that's gonna be really tough to come by. Uh, if you're looking for a larger lot with garage, green space, things like that, you're looking at neighbors like Spring Valley, we are gonna be above $2 million most of the time. Uh, we've covered that in other videos. So, and that, you know, that's just not unique to just single family homes. Condos and townhouses by and large are gonna cost you more in DC than they are in Maryland, just based on location, right? If you wanna be closer to the city, it's gonna cost you more for the property itself. Uh, but you, you know, there are trade-offs for other things, which we're going to cover later in the video. Uh, so it has to do with a lot of your preference for lifestyle, how close you want to be to work and how close you want to be to other neighbors. Because when you're in DC, it's a much tighter grouping of housing. You're going to get smaller lot sizes than you are in Maryland, regardless of what county you're in. Everything is a bit more spread out than it's going to be in DC. So you should know that going into it, you're going to have tighter lots and it's going to cost you more for housing, uh, apples to apples in DC versus anywhere in Maryland. Okay, getting into politics, and I won't say uh, too long on this. Um, I will say it's similar, but different, uh, just really in structure. So DC is not a state, it's a city. It runs on a mayor and a city council system. So the city council is made up of 13 council members, eight directly represent their wards, five are at large members in which you would vote for any one of them during the uh, their races. Now, what you do have in Maryland is it is, since it is a state, you've got two senators, eight congressional members, seven of which are uh, Democrats, one a Republican. You've got Democrats in the state house, Democrats in the state Senate, Democrat governor, Montgomery County. You've got a county executive and a county council, all of which are Democrats. So I would say it's a very blue area, similar, but different based on structure. You're going to find similar policies across the board between each jurisdiction, uh, nuances, for the city versus county versus state, but all very similar in the end. Okay, getting to everyone's favorite topic, which is taxes. There are some key differences here. So in DC, your income tax rate goes between four and 10.75%, depending upon your income on a step up basis in each bracket. In Maryland, you're looking at four and a quarter to 8.95%. That includes this, the possible state as well as county rates. It does vary county by county. So the county rate in, in those numbers is two and a quarter to 3.2%. Montgomery County, for instance, is at 3.2%. About half the counties in Maryland fall under that number. So it really depends on where you live in the state, what you're gonna pay for your income taxes as well as your income level. Um, so those are some differences. I'll have the tables for you below so you can actually look up where you're at and kind of figure that out. But you should always talk to your accountant as well. Now, property taxes, Forbes has DC ranked as one of the 10 best tax rates uh, if DC was a state in the country. But you also have to keep in mind that properties are worth more in DC than they are in other areas. So yes, you're paying a lesser rate on property taxes than you are in Maryland, uh, which is actually ranked one of the 20 worst uh, for property tax rates. But just know that in DC, you're going to pay more because it's assessed at a higher value. Now, Montgomery County has recently changed its property tax rates. It's increased them uh, significantly this year, as well as its recordation taxes, which I have covered in other videos, uh, specifically about Bethesda, Montgomery County. I'll link for that up here. Uh, and 
they significantly increase your recordation taxes. In some cases, if you're buying a million dollars, it can cost you over $7,000 more than it had in the past just on your purchase, not including your ongoing property tax rates. So I would give the edge to DC on property taxes. Income obviously varies completely upon what your active income is. Uh, so just know those are some key differences when it comes to taxes between the two jurisdictions. Hey guys, if this is helpful for you at all, do me a favor, hit that like button and subscribe. Okay, getting into business and economy. DC has two Fortune 500 companies headquartered in it, and Montgomery County has two out of the three for Maryland in it. Um, Montgomery County, you're gonna find a lot more focus in say Bethesda in banking and financial services. If you go up I-270, we have a, a bio life science corridor there, which has out of uh, the top 25 bio life science companies in the US, 17 have offices there. Uh, you're gonna find companies like AstraZeneca, GlaxoSmithKline, Novavax. There's just a ton of things going on there. And that area is continuing to grow. It used to be called DNA um, Valley by Time Magazine in the past, where if you focus on DC, you're gonna find a lot of government jobs, obviously, right? Because the federal government is there. You're gonna find a lot of attorneys. Uh, I've read numerous times where there's more lawyers than there are, say, teachers in DC. You're gonna find a lot of legal jobs. Um, there are large employers in DC that are not headquartered here. So if you look at like Microsoft, Google, Amazon, they all have offices in DC, as well as a number of other companies because they have reasons to be in DC for influence, as well as for having positioning on the East Coast, even if they have manufacturing centers in the Midwest or the West Coast. Um, so, but I would give the edge to DC in this one. It has, in my opinion, a bit more of a, a stronger economy, uh, a stronger, you know, workforce, people commute from Maryland to DC, right? They don't do that in reverse. You don't live in DC by and large and commute to Maryland. It doesn't work that way. Um, so I would give the edge to business and economy in DC, but you have your reasons, right? If you don't want to live in the city, but you need to work in DC, then obviously you could be commuting from Montgomery County. All right, getting into school and education, I'm going to focus with a lot of third party information in this section, because as a real estate agent, we can get a lot of trouble for, uh, giving personal opinions and that would cause steering. So Wallet Hub has Maryland ranked as number eight in the nation for its K through 12 public system. It has DC ranked as number 27, but DC has certainly been on the rise the past few years, uh, as well as we use niche.com a lot. In Montgomery County, niche.com um, has Montgomery County high schools all ranked very high for the state of Maryland and for the region as a whole. But there's also uh, very popular high schools in Northwest DC. Uh, there's been a lot of growth there uh, for the public school system, so much so that they've opened a new high school this year, MacArthur High School in Northwest DC, which is enrolling ninth and 10th graders this year. We'll expand to 11th and then 12th after that uh, in the coming years. So I would say that the popularity for people moving to DC to to be in Northwest and um, th those, that section of public schools is increasing and I don't see that slowing down based on data available. Um, now going into public universities, right? Uh, DC, you've got one public university, which is the University of DC. But if you um, are a DC resident and you're going to attend a public university outside of DC, there are things like DC TAG, which is the tuition assistance grant. I'll have a link below for information about that. That can help offset your um, higher education costs being a resident of DC and going to school outside of DC. Now in Maryland, you don't have that option. You have a very large public uh, school system where you have the university system of Maryland, which has 12 public universities, the flagship university being University of Maryland College Park, which is also located right outside of DC, has a huge campus and a, a ton of other stuff going on there as well. Um, there are private schools in both. There's 18 other uh, private schools and colleges in DC. Some very famous ones that you may know, like Georgetown University, GW, Howard University, Gallaudet. Um, and there's a number of other private institutions in Maryland with the highest rank being Johns Hopkins University. So I would say there's a ton of higher education opportunities, whether you're going to be in the state of Maryland near Montgomery County or in DC available to you. Um, and if you're a DC resident, you do have public higher education options for you available outside of DC, thanks to DC TAG as well. Okay, moving on to retirement and estate. Now, uh, it's a very expensive area to live in. So your retirement's gonna cost you more here than it would be elsewhere, especially if you're on a fixed income of some kind or you just don't have active income anymore. Um, I don't see a ton of people moving to this area to retire as a result. I see people moving out of the area when they retire. But if you chose to retire here, US News has DC ranked the 82nd best city to retire in with 
cost of living being the number one detriment to you. Actually has activities to do as number one though, uh, in terms of all areas to retire. Maryland is not highly ranked at all. It's ranked number 42 in terms of states to retire because it has an estate as well as an inheritance tax. It's the only state in the country that has it. Whereas DC has just solely an estate tax and you're saving an exemption up to 4.3 million. But this area in terms of, or in general, when you are looking at retirement, you need to you know, really get in line with your advisory team, your CPA, your attorney, whoever that is for you, and go over your specific situation, what structures, what trusts you may need to set up that put yourself in the best financial position moving forward if you're looking to retire, especially in this area. So I would say neither is a great uh, first choice for retirement, unless you love living here, which is great if you do, uh, but just know that it's going to be a high cost area for you if you're looking to retire here. So between DC and Maryland, it really comes down to kind of your lifestyle choices, right? If you want to be walkable to all the things, all the restaurants, shops, bars, clubs, all that stuff, DC is probably more your vibe. If you want to be out in the burbs, right? You want a single family home with a two car garage and a big yard, Montgomery County is probably more your fit. But if you guys have any questions about your move in, out of the area, or anything in between, feel free to contact me directly. My info is below. And until next time, I hope to see you around town.